Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Good Doctors continuing coverage of holiday movies on Netflix. I'm Dr. Kristen. I'm Dr. Aaron. And we're branching out from Netflix as we have a couple times this year. We are going to um, never speak of last videos coverage again. Mm-mm. And we are moving on now to what we are happy to report is one of the new echelon, pantheon, Mount Rushmore level Christmas movies in my book. Yeah. It is called The Christmas Setup. Agreed. It is on Lifetime. Yes. Television for women and people who like Happily Ever Afters. Cleverly titling their Christmas movies season, It's a Wonderful Lifetime, which bonus points. I love it. They've had just as many premieres as Hallmark this year and have not gotten the, the cultural buzz. A couple of them have been real snoozers, but my parents and I have watched a few of them. Um, This one and another one that we're going to cover next week have been A plus gold stars. So the Christmas match is the story of Hugo, who is a up and uptight and up and coming New York lawyer whose mother, who is from Milwaukee and whose mother is amazingly played by Fran Drescher. Oh my God. I have no idea if she's Milwaukee, but man, is she North Jersey. So Uh, yeah, she's definitely like in the, in the movie, she's from New York. Yeah. For sure. And they like relocated to Milwaukee. Yeah. So he takes his very best friend, who's a girl named Madeline. Madeline. There we go. I did Adrian in my head for some reason. I knew that was wrong. So he takes Madeline home for Christmas. I think his brother is named Aiden. So I think that's probably where you got that. There we go. Um, And mom is overjoyed, thinks it's the greatest thing. But of course, guys, there is a festival to be saved. So there. Always. Always. Small town Kate festival. Is in charge. Today. Kate is the mom. Kate yeah. is in charge of the historical Save the Railroad Station Committee. And Hugo gets kind of roped into it because, gosh darn it, these developers tearing down my childhood. And in the meantime, he meets the his high school crush, Patrick, who now has moved back from wherever he was living, Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, yeah, that's right, because he developed that app. He developed an app named Cassandra, which I love. And uh moves back to help his dad run the Christmas tree farm and essentially make Milwaukee the greatest place to live on earth. We have no connections to Milwaukee, except that now I like both cheese and beer. And so perhaps we need to visit. Um, It seems if this is anything representative, I'm sure it's not. It has Um, some really cool architecture. I know that like. Yeah. If they were, it was, it was pretty rad. Yeah. So of course, because you've seen these movies before and so have we, Patrick and Hugo fall in love. There are obstacles along the way the town. What I do like about this though, is that you get the impression that the town festival is saved, but it's not actually concluded because, yeah. because it's going to take a little of legal wrangling and there's some questions asked. And so yeah. it really led to the feeling of this movie being slice of life. Yeah. Like nothing was wrapped up in a neat little bow, except that like love wins, which is yeah. awesome. Um, it was casually human in a way that so few of these are. Yeah. They were both like, they were both out to their parents. It was totally normal. There's a scene at one point where Madeline accidentally drops a massive secret and the work that Fran Drescher does with her face was so good. And I've, I've like faced a similar decision to Hugo in this particular scene. And my parents processed it very similarly. I know. Um, And it was, the cat yeah it was just very like oh these are people who happen to be gay and so therefore their love story is going to be with another man and they're going to be awkward just like straights are and they're going to miscommunicate just like straights do and 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 their conversations are going to have a little bit about the fact that they're gay because that's who they are but it's not the driving point of the story so it and you know one of the great parts of like so Patrick was Hugo's like high school crush and Patrick was out in high school and Hugo wasn't and so he said something to him about that like on one of their dates and so it was just a conversation it was just like I was really jealous I wasn't there yet um with who I was and like watching you like that was really you know meaningful to me but it wasn't like they didn't build into like dramatic music. It wasn't a huge plot point. It was just like humans talking about their lives. And just like straight humans who fall in love talk about their relationships and who they once were. So spoiler alert, 
so do the gays. Um, but yeah, it was, I just wrote like casual gays. They were just like, they were just humans who happened to be attracted to men. Like, and what a better way to tell a Hallmark or to tell a Christmas story where just humans get to be humans. I loved everything about it. Every, literally everything. I grinned the entire movie. Well, the whole time. I just like, all I did was like every five minutes go, ee, ee. The, the scene that really got me the most though, and this has nothing to do with their love story, but they go to a bar where a drag queen is running a Christmas karaoke. Like pop-up karaoke. Ridiculously themed cocktails. And I had this, like, I had to grab my desk and be like, that should be my life. Oh, like, yeah. That was that was the most like lived in scene for us because we love to go to fun like Christmas or fun just pop up places. With there's our a great pop up here, a great Christmas pop up here in Philly called Tinsel, yeah. and it was so much fun last year. I'm so sad. Yeah, I know. And like drink fun cocktails with funny names, and uh, we've done that so many times in our life, and we will do it so many times again. But yeah, it was just like. I don't know, man. And that, like, for me, the the underlying story that they're trying to save the um, station house because um, it was owned by this man who helped found the town. Um, and the two, Hugo and Patrick, through their, like, trying to save this festival and investigating, find out that this man, Carol, was gay as well. And that the reason they have this festival on Christmas Eve is, like, dedicated to the man who was his life partner. Um, and they have real honest conversations about how hard it would have been to live life closeted. And they're so glad that they live in this world. And it's just one of those, like, what we love about the Christmas movies is that they show us in a lot of ways the way that the world should be. Yeah. Even though it's not always. And like, we're both big fans of, of the show Shit's Creek. And that's one of the things that it does so well is it shows us a world free of homophobia that like we can dream about. And this movie did that too. And and it just felt like it's a it yeah, it just felt great. And I loved all the conversations that they had around it and um how they just got to be humans falling in love. And at the end it wasn't all wrapped up in a neat bow and we're not sure what's happening with Ma- Matt Madeline, his best friend falls in love with uh, Hugo's brother, which is adorable. And they're such a cute couple. But like, he's gonna, she's still in New York and he's stationed in Indianapolis and like, but we're gonna make it work because we care about each other. And like, that was the end. The end was just like, what was, there was a quote that was, anything worth having is worth fighting for. Yeah. Happily Ever After's uh, lovely twin sister is happily for now. Mm -hmm. And I'll take it. Mm -hmm. This Christmas, these five people found joy. Yeah. And they found it together and in, especially in these times, we want to thank Lifetime for intentionally scripting something where normal humans were treated like normal humans. Not plot points or caricatures. Or caricatures, and everybody got to find joy. Yes, and I think one of the best things that happened besides the, you know, kiss in the last scene was the fact that um Kate the mom took 8,000 photographs as they were like panning away she just kept hitting the button and I was like that is the realest realest mom thing I've ever seen and like bless you for thinking of that detail that was like in um the Christmas house when they were like who taught dad powerpoint and I was like (laughs) oh real people are writing these scripts like (laughs) she just kept hitting the button I loved it loved it I loved it I'm going to see if we got bingo. I'm looking in case you have anything else to say. I'm checking our bingo. No, I, I uh, have never seen any of these actors besides Fran Drescher before in anything because the, the gentleman who plays Hugo, it was very popular on Arrow, which is not a show that I watched. Um, and evidently, according to Wikipedia, uh, his character in Arrow was gay because he advocated for that and kind of put it in his contract. So he is the change he wants to see in the world in terms of representation, which I think is really rad. That's awesome. Um, I'm not sure. I can't I mean, we got fake hot chocolate. We got festival. We did. I but everybody know. loves Christmas. The first kiss is not in the final scene. And it was the first kiss was not interrupted either. Not in, no, the first kiss was interrupted. Was it? Yes, because they were like, they were on the yeah. street or something. And the, oh, yeah. And the phone rang. Oh, and okay. Phone rang. Hold on. We might. Uh, no. Yep. Meh. 
Wow, this is thrilling viewing, I'm sure. For <laughs> sorry, everyone. folks. Sorry, folks. We might have it if we want to call them second chance, which I'm not sure we do. Um, but there's interrupted first kiss. Main characters solve a mystery, like kind of the mystery of Carol a little yeah, bit. They, they, yeah, I'll give them that. It's a stretch. There were definitely Christmas songs in the background. There was definitely decorating happening. So that way we would get bingo, but it's a little bit of a stretch. Small town holiday festival. Did we have a winter sport? No. So spirit of Christmas, definitely interrupted first kiss. Character is a gifted musician. No. Uh, so... Ish. I mean, I'll give this a second chance romance for the simple fact that it was clear that Patrick was into Hugo in high school. Yeah, that they were both into each other in high school. They yeah. were both into each other. I think uh, and that's a fun subsect of second chance where it's not like they broke up. It's just like we missed our shot the first time. And now, so actually, you know, I'm talking myself into it. This is a second chance. Because <laughs> Patrick is like 100% shooting his shot. From Patrick is dead. so into Hugo the literal minute he sees him. And I love it. The literal minute. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. We've talked ourselves into it. And I think it is kind of uh, a mystery because nobody really knows anything about this Carol man. And they- No, like, and I think it's but, and the mystery of how did they get the zoning permission? Because yeah. Oh yeah. And like, how did, how did this festival come about? Like, why did it come about? Um, so officially we decided we have bingo. Yay. I don't even think we talked about if there was bingo in Dolly Parton's Christmas catastrophe um because we were so upset about it but we definitely had bingo in this one um there were lots of lots of uh squares filled on the bingo card uh even with the bingo because it was just it's a trope fest but man was it done perfectly Mwah. Mwah. so tune in next video to see if our final Christmas movie the Christmas Christmas match. ever after Christmas ever after yeah um it also is 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 more Dolly Parton or more Christmas. Fran Drescher. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see which one it is. We'll see you next time, folks. What a fabulous spectrum to be on <laughs> in 2020. We will see you guys next time. <laughs>